John Mendez here and we're just going to do a little how-to for you on stone gear and anodes. What to look for, what to check and if you are not interested in actually doing it yourself what you should look for when the boat yard's done it for you. Make sure you've done it all to the right standard, make sure you're happy with the result and that you're ready to go boating for another year. As you can see we're in a working boat yard, there's people working on all the boats around us. It's packed out and it's a getting ready time of year so there will be a bit of background noise not a lot we can do about that just bear with us so the things that I think are really important that you check whether you get a boatyard to do this or whether you check it before they do it and then after entirely up to you but you always want to look at your out drive leg the condition so you can see here anodes are quite worn got a really badly worn ring anode down the bottom we've got trimmed hand anodes up here which are quite worn as well and they'll need to be changed the out drive leg itself, if the boat's going to live in the water, this will need to be rubbed down, primed and then painted with an anti-fail because otherwise it will you know, get really claggy and you lose a lot of speed. And then the props themselves are going to need to come off, A, to change that anode at the, at the front there, but also for a clean up and a polish. Now, before I started, you can see one of these props is really shiny and one's quite skank. So what I did was I cleaned one early this morning with it on the boat. So you can see the sort of finish we're looking for. Some people prefer it on the boat because it's nice and easier to a better height. Some people like taking them off and doing them on the bench. doesn't matter. But I just thought you'd see what one should look like before we remove them. So first thing I'm going to do is a little strip down. So I'm going to take the props off. There's a little complicated routine. We'll just go through that. Then we're going to get to the anode at the back. Take these trim tab, uh, beg your pardon, take these cavitation plate anodes off. Take trim tab anodes off and then take the little anodes actually on the drive leg off itself. And then we need to raise the leg a little bit so we can just take the block anode off at the back. So props off is quite easy. You need a prop spanner. Volvo make a clever little one with the right gadget for the next hub nut. So first thing we have to do is the spanner into the central nut and then you need a improvised block of wood. And that just jams against the bottom of the out drive so that we can undo the nut. Once we get that off, it spins quite a long way. Okay, that's now loose. The next thing we've got to do is the cone nut. So now this part of the tool has actually come with it. That's actually pretty loose. I might be able to do that by hand. Let's just put the block of wood in there. It's tight of enough. There it goes. Now you'll see this is nicely greased, which is fantastic. The previous people that put it on obviously put loads of waterproof grease in, which is great. You can just see the bolt. Yeah, I'll give it a shove. You can just see the bolt there. And that is a captive bolt. It doesn't fall out, so you don't lose that. Now it's really important that you remember what order you took things off. So I tend to lay them out on a bit of paper, take a picture so I know where I've got to. So we'll do that in a moment. So nuts are off now. Gentle tap. comes Oop. they're quite heavy so you usually get caught out that's that one off then you'll see we've got the ring there's the little ring that's really important that you get that in between the two so that goes next on me bit of paper so I'll get me line the thing lined up Next one, slightly more interesting. That locks on that special nut. Get it in the right place, there we are. So block of wood in and then just, and these are normally pretty tight. Note the little plastic washer, that sits in there against the face of the prop with this nut up against it. Easy to not see that and lose it. Uh, 
and now the prop. Now, this is heavy. You might not think it, but it weighs about 10 kilos. And you can see there, a bit of corrosion in the rear there, need to clean up before we put it all back on. Lastly, we've got the little spatial washer. Now, this is actually grooved. So as you pull it off, it cleans the grease out of the grooves. Really helpful, but very messy. So nice and simply, that was the first thing to come off, the bolts in the centre, then a prop, then a thrust washer, then the big nut, then the little plastic washer, which is easy to miss, then the second prop, and then the little thrust washer, which goes on the very beginning. And when I put them back, have to get that order. So I always take a photo on my phone, so I remember the order, I took the blooming things off, because there's nothing worse than getting it wrong. I'm just gonna take the worst of the grease off, because otherwise, you get covered. I want to leave a little bit on because it's in a boatyard and it's outdoors and I want it to stay nice while I'm away but we're just going to take the worst off. Just use one of those wipe job things. And this is more just so that I don't get completely covered in the blooming stuff. So on reassembly we have to apply loads of grease of all of that so that it all stays nicely lubricated. Now the crucial thing is the two seals here, there's one in this shaft and there's one in this, and if I just turn for a moment, you can see the shafts go opposite directions. That's how those props do counter-rotating. If you get fishing line between your props and it goes in these seals, it can actually cause a leak of the gearbox oil or put water into the gearbox oil, which is really bad news. Now these look perfect and there was no line when I took it off, so I'm hoping that all's good. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this anode and it's a really big um, Phillips bit. I don't have a massive Phillips bit so I just use a really big normal bit, pop it in there, give it a thump because I find that tends to loosen the screws and that's loosened straight away. We'll try on the second one and it's absolutely lined up, give it a good thump. I find that just breaks any tension in the screw or whatever. Now, don't want to lose these and we don't want them getting all dirty on the floor of the boatyard. And there's one, again, it's been nicely greased. That's good. Take that out. Screws are out. Couple of taps, there she comes. And you can see that is absolutely shot. But that's really good news because it means it's doing its job this is corroding, the leg and the props aren't. So I'm not unhappy with that. And there's actually quite a bit of meat left on the actual anode, but the outside compared to a new one is pretty poor. Now, this owner's had a couple of extra anodes fitted, which when you think about the wear on this one is actually a really good idea. So he's trying to maintain a good an anode a a cathodic protection, hard to say that. So ring spanner underneath, we're just gonna unwind these. Same on this one, ring spanner underneath, and off they come. Okay, now these have got lock washers, so they're really important. I'll pop those there for a minute. And we've got nice big washers on the anodes. That's another one. And then we've got this one. Note it's always a soft hammer, not a metal hammer, because we don't want to damage anything. That's those, and now I'm going to pop the bolts back on so that we don't lose them. That's both of these just re-secured so I don't lose them. I'll take them out when I'm doing my cleaning, but the most important thing at the moment is I don't lose anything important. Now we've got a pair of triangle anodes up here, which are in actually pretty good condition, but we'll remove them anyway. So they're on a little hexagon drive. side first. Again, give it a thump and that just loosens the threads. You've got to remember everything gets covered in scale and weed. And Volvo are quite good. With these they give you a new bolt each time. That's that little one there. There's the bolt. See it's quite worn on the back. Okay. And then we've got one on the other side of the drive, exactly the same. So next thing's a real moment of truth. Uh, we hope everything's been good on the leg all year. So I'm just gonna clean the top of the leg here 
with a little wire brush. And this is a 14 mil on the top now. And again, where's my hammer? Little tap. There it comes. This is the moment of truth because this is the dipstick for the oil in the leg. And what I'm praying, and it is a little prayer, is that when I pull it, the oil is beautiful and clear, and so clear that we can barely see it. So here we go. I don't know if you can even see that. There's the oil. There, and there's the level. Very hard to see. But the really good news, and we'll dip it once more just to make sure, so we're going all the way back in. And it's measured just resting in. It's not measured um, screwed in. Lift out. There's the oil on the end. You can just see it better that time. There's the oil level. And what is fantastic news is there's no emulsification. There's no water in that oil at all. If it was looking uh, like there was any water in it, there'd be a sort of creamy consistency and there's not a hint. So I am delighted for the owner because that saves a big bill. It means that these seals on the propeller that I mentioned earlier, they're sound. So that's great. So it just needs a once over it had a big service last summer so this is just a double check and make sure we're happy so what we're going to do is new oil o-ring on there and that will go back in we'll just pop it in for the moment because the last thing we want to do is lose it we've got a new o-ring in our spares kit and now the next thing we're going to do is lift the leg because these two anodes in here the leg is in the way so i need to lift it up and that allows me to look at the bellows and check those anodes. So leg is now up, as you can see, and I'm just gonna take these last anodes off, which sit right at the back here. So have a little tap. And these are not too bad. You could leave them if you wanted, give them a good clean up, but we'll take them off so you can see what happens. And again, this owner has been very careful and has put doubles on rather than just singles to make sure they've got the maximum protection possible. The legs thousands of pounds and the anodes are in comparison quite cheap. You don't want to risk it. Now we're onto the trim tab anodes. Here it comes. And again, we've got lock washers. Now, this one is stuck on the thread, so I've got to spin the whole anode. There. Come off your so-and-so, there we go. See, it's quite, quite bad. And I'm just putting the nuts and the washer back on, so I know where everything is. Same on the other side, because two trim tabs, two anodes. Last thing to check is I'm going to undo the uh, massive circlip on the drive gator. Two reasons. A, I want to make sure there's no splits or cracks in it, and B, I want to make sure there's no water in there with the universal joint. Now, it's crucial when you put it back on that it sits at about just above three o'clock on when viewed from a stern on the leg. So I'll undo that, we'll have a peep, and then we'll put that back on. The other thing to look at is the rams here, just to make sure there's no pitting and scoring. This had new rams fairly recently and they're looking beautiful, but just always have a look at your rams. When the leg is in the water, if you're leaving it in the water, always stow the boat with the leg fully down and then you don't get any growth on the rams and getting them ruined. Undo this and then we'll have a peep. So we've got all the anodes off, we've checked the bellows, we've checked the gear oil, we found no fishing line. So what we've got to do now is give it all a really good clean up I tend to use a mixture of emery cloth, uh, a wire brush for some of the corners, be very careful around the hydraulic rams, and we'll scrape off the uh, trim tabs, get the stern of the boat fully antifouled, get the leg painted with special outdrive antifoul, put all the new anodes back on, and we're ready for the water. Props would be a good idea as well. We'll give those a little polish and they can go back on as well. <laughs>